Hey for our members, this is G4740 point fuel. I know I promised you a video a couple of weeks ago and uh, here it is. I wanted to give you a just a rundown of the wheel and how much of a challenge it was. I thought it was just going to be a matter of just slapping that uh, wheel with the magnets in there in the frame and be done. And what I realized later was that that was not the case. So let me give you a, uh, just a quick run through of all the challenges. First of all, in order to get this wheel in there, you're looking at both a height adjustment, okay, um, whether the wheel is up or down. You're looking a left-right adjustment. You're looking at what I'm going to call a pitch adjustment, which is left or right, you know. Um, and you're also looking at aligning it in such a way, and I don't know if I can get in here, in such a way that the gap between these uh, couplings and the frame actually won't get in your way with the frame. So I'm going to run through that. First of all, I wanted to give myself some flexibility and I wanted to go with something that gave me some height adjustment. So I used Technomancer's concept of using the aluminum bar to rest the pillow blocks on. Uh, my shaft happens to be five, uh, five eighth inch, five eighth inch shaft. Okay. So um, I was putzing around and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do for a height adjustment and I finally found something that I felt was going to give me height adjustment. So let me see if I can get in here. This is actually a lifter that I have or that I bought for my workbench. What it does is it allows you to level the workbench and I'm going to show you that here in a second. And what I did was this this lifter, I guess if that's what you call it, and I'll uh, put the link on the YouTube video. This lifter actually has a 90 degree angle, about a quarter of an inch here, and I took I took that piece of metal off. I took that 90 degree off and made this flush or flat. And what I realized later is that I could use this to adjust this aluminum bar vertically up and down, and that worked out great because once this thing is on here. Um, getting this thing to go up or down um, any which way so that it is you know equidistant on this side of the frame and equidistant on that side of the frame uh, from a vertical perspective worked out just fine. I had the lifter originally in the middle that didn't work this just made it into a seesaw so I wound up putting one on the left and one on the right. Let me show you the shot of where that actually comes into play when you own a workbench and you're trying to level it. So let me zoom in over here. This is what it actually looks like. So I got the bright idea of taking a spare set that I had and I just cut off the 90, the, the metal that's underneath here and made it flush. Turned it around, slapped it on the wheel and got myself some vertical adjustment. So that worked out great. The other adjustment that you, that you need to have when you're dealing with the wheel is uh, a left right adjustment so whether you want to move the wheel to the left or you want to move it to the right and these pillow blocks that I bought and I'll also put uh, the link actually this is uh, just a spare that I have actually has enough hole, enough space in this hole here I would say almost half an inch to once the pillow block is setting and before you tighten these bolts down it allows you to shift the wheel left or right um, almost half an inch so that you can get the alignment that you need here on the left or the left side of the wheel or the right side of the wheel equal distance with the frame. So um, that kind of took care of itself using that there. Um, after I got my left right uh, adjustment out of the way and I got my height adjustment, by the way, I'm going to spin around here. The aluminum bar is actually on both sides. So there's lifters, what I call lifters, on both sides. And that kind of, like I said, gave me the, the flexibility of, of, um, of moving the wheel up and down. Okay, I think I'm going to use this side of the frame. Um, I'm just going to keep it clean and use it for measurements and stuff like that and use the other side of the frame for the harness and the, the alignment of the coils and everything okay so moving on here we are inside the wheel okay um, don't mind this piece of paper it's for my next step which has to do with uh, aligning the coils so 
Um, my core, my wheel is not true. I'm not worried about that either. I'll figure that out later. So I'm giving it a spin there. But I gotta tell you, it spins very, very freely. I think I'm gonna have to give this thing one more of a, of a, a once over for an adjustment perspective. But there's something that I wanna share with you that actually almost caused me some a great deal of angst after I built this thing. And that is, let me whip out my pencil. I'm not as fancy as Technomancer and I don't have a laser. So I'm gonna get in here and show you what I'm talking about. This is my coupling, okay? And my coupling, okay? I didn't do the math when I bought these. The sum of your two couplings, the left side, let me see if I can do this. The left side, the right side, and the thickness of your wheel cannot exceed the five inches of your coil or the height of your coil. And I came almost within almost a quarter of an inch right there. And I was going batty because I said, oh no, I'm gonna have to get some more couplings, probably drill new holes in the wheel, and you know, set me back God knows how long. But uh, after I did all the math on paper and, and sat down and, and got the wheel mounted, everything worked out. So I only have about a quarter of an inch on both sides of my frames. Let me see if I can get in here and show you that. There's only about a quarter of an inch, just barely enough to get that pencil in there, okay, on both sides. Um, what's going to keep it together from sliding, obviously, are these cap, uh, shaft couplings, uh, collars that keep the shaft from moving left or right. So... I'm gonna be fine there. So after it was all said and done, we that gave me you know some confidence that the wheel was gonna work. Then came the issue of a, a, what I call a left tilt or a right tilt on this wheel. Um, the left or right tilt had to do with how far this bar was up or how far this bar was down or up, which meant that the wheel was at an angle and I had to I'll, you know keep it straight uh, let me tell you I said this uh, earlier in uh, in the forum when I, when I showed some pictures if you have an old bicycle and you have to change that flat tire at one point you should be fine this is really not a big deal so the key is I don't know if you can see this right here on my um, on my magnet covers I actually uh, used a template when I did my covers and I actually have uh, these red these some red arrows here that marked the dead center of the magnet cover. And that worked out great because I know that that dead center needs to be two and a half inches that way and two and a half inches to the left, which should put this coil dead, dead center. Let me get a better shot of that. Should put this coil dead center on that magnet when I get it in there. This is my uh, sample coil. And I use it to putz around with and you know do estimates and stuff like that. So. So far, so good. Um, I got a little crossbar there. That's exactly five inches. That's exactly the height of the coil itself. So that's what's keeping the frame from opening up on me, which was another problem I realized when I was doing the wheel. I only had one of these on here, and I actually had to spread some around, one here, one here, and two on the other side to keep the frame from opening them up like a, like a wishbone, which is what it was doing on me. So got that out of the way. So next step and I promise to keep this video short, is to get this these coils mounted on here. I don't know if you remember when I posted my form, um, and I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually some score marks on here. This score mark actually matches the firing pattern um, that I'm gonna be using. So I should be able to line up that coil dead center on the score, right, and at that point get into some fancy alignment issues um, to get the coil a quarter of an inch away from the wheel that's pretty much it oh by the way yes when I was done with the bar uh, to keep the bar from moving and keeping it pinned against the frame I simply uh, had two holes ready to go on this on this aluminum bar here here and here and I just drilled a hole and put a bolt on it and that kept the aluminum bar pinned to the frame which stabilizes the pillow block um, I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty ecstatic about this. This gave me a lot of flexibility with not having to mess around and drill a lot of holes in the block. Once I, ha once I got that to be exactly how I wanted it to be with a level on both sides, this side and the other side, I just locked it in and I was done. And if I ever have to you go to a different pillow block, 
then I'll just drop these or raise these accordingly. I got a lock uh, plastic nut lock washer here to keep this uh, the vibration from this turning on me. Um, it won't turn when it's on a workbench, but it will turn here um, because the workbench has all the load on it that it does. So that's where I'm at for our members. This is, Z, this is G47 for zero point fuel. Thanks for watching. We're out.